end of 2023 has been a busy yet exciting time for Ken Burton, with regular appearances on BBC television, extensive contributions to movie soundtracks, performances in prestigious venues, and exciting news on the composing front. Ken Burton has enjoyed a very busy schedule since October. On October 22nd, he was featured extensively on BBC Television's Songs of Praise. The Songs of Praise program is the longest-running Christian music television program in the world. In this episode, Ken helped to tell the story of the Fisk Jubilee Singers, a choir formed after the abolition of slavery in America in the 1800s. The choir visited the United Kingdom in 1873, performing to the Queen, Prime Minister, and other important people, in some of the most prestigious places in the country. Their new music which had never been heard before caused an absolute sensation. Ken was interviewed by presenter and musician Yolanda Brown, and three of his choirs appeared on the program, namely the Adventist Vocal Ensemble, the Croydon SDA Gospel Choir and the London Adventist Chorale. The program is available to watch on BBC iPlayer for 12 months. Ken was one of the three judges for the three-part television and radio series, Young Chorister of the Year. Along with fellow judges Wynne Evans and Laura Wright, Burton was highly impressed by the young singers who participated in the program at Gorton Monastery. The decision that we had to make was a challenge because all of the singers delivered with confidence, with beauty. And... The series is available to watch on BBC iPlayer for 12 months. Over the festive season, Ken had a busy television schedule. Starting with BBC Two and BBC One Wales on December 23rd, Burton was conductor for the Catherine Jenkins Christmas show, Home for Christmas. Jenkins is one of the biggest selling classical artists in the world, and was joined by several guests including the American pianist Chloe Flower, singer Jack Savaretti and celebrity opera singer and winner of Masterchef Wynne Evans, with whom Burton had judged Chorister of the Year. The programme was repeated on Christmas Eve on BBC One Wales. The programme is available for 12 months on iPlayer. Ken Burton conducted and arranged the majority of the music for the Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve Songs of Praise programmes. An audience of nearly 2,000 sang popular carols and hymns, and were treated to the wonderful singing of the programme presenters Catherine Jenkins and Alad Jones and other guests including Tommy Blaze, Michael Ball, Carly Piali, the Chorister of the Year winners, and the winner of the Gospel Choir of the Year. The programs are available on BBC iPlayer. And on Christmas Day Ken appeared on BBC television with his quartet Tessera on the closing program of the evening called On Christmas Night. Together with the South African classical soprano Pumetsa Matsukisha, they performed the classic French carol, O Holy Night. Programs are available on BBC iPlayer. London Adventist Chorale has had one of its busiest Christmas seasons in years. On December 2nd, it made its annual visit up to the northwest of England to the Clonta Opera Theatre to present once again to a most enthusiastic audience. Following that event the London Adventist Chorale performed on December 3rd at the world-famous Wembley Stadium, the United Kingdom's largest and national sports stadium hosting its major football tournaments and big concerts. The occasion was a Christianity and football event, where Christians involved in the footballing world as players, managers, physiotherapists, chaplains and the like, were interviewed by one of television's main sports presenters, Adrian Childs. The chorale sang on the pitch towards the stands in a special worship service. So we were able to share a couple of songs on that pitch and as you can imagine, the acoustics were, yeah, can we sing here every week? The acoustics were absolutely great, but the actual event itself was a tremendous blessing 
for those of us who attended. I must say my bases defended well. Tenors were good in defense. Uh, sopranos were good up front. Uh, the altos, we put them on a subs bench. No, we didn't. I love you altos. However, <laughs> no, the altos, the altos were great. But we had, we had a, a most amazing time there. And I think we were appreciated because nobody showed us the red card. Following the Wembley event, it was straight on to preparing for a huge concert at the Royal Albert Hall, conducted by international conductor Maureen Alsop. The program was called Gospel Messiah, Too Hot to Handle, a reimagination of the original Messiah by George Handel. London Adventist Chorale, BBC Symphony Chorus and Concert Orchestra presented this concert on December 7th to enthusiastic response. The concert was broadcast on BBC Radio 3 on December 12th and is still available on BBC Sounds. The concert was filmed for television broadcast both in the United Kingdom and the United States in December 2024. Straight after the successful Royal Albert Hall event, immediately on to its next engagement with the Chine Orchestra, who performed three concerts of music ranging from Handel and Vivaldi to Brazilian composer Garcia, and a number of Christmas carols arranged by Ken Burton, who conducted the orchestra and choir in two of the concerts. On December 10, Burton did a live interview on BBC Radio 2 on a show which goes out to around 3 million people. It was nearly a literal radio silence, and almost all went wrong when the hotel in which he was staying at the time suddenly had internet issues which affected his ability to sign on to a planned Zoom call. All was resolved in the end with literally two minutes to spare. On December 14 at a prestigious venue in London called Drumsheds, Ken conducted a 70-piece choir as part of a show presented the British band Salt, which plays a wide range of music spanning many different styles. The press was unanimous in giving the show five-star reviews. The Quartet Tessera, of which Ken is musical director, recorded and released a Christmas song and video for the benefit of children around the world. Here is a short snippet of it. The song is a mix of the traditional carol, Silent Night, and a new song with text drawn from the 18th century American poet Phyllis Wheatley, who was born in West Africa, kidnapped as a child and sold into slavery in America. The quartet offers the video and song for free, in return asking listeners to freely donate to a children's charitable cause of their own choice. Ken has been appointed as a composer in residence for the Voches 8 octet. This will involve him writing new works for group, who has impressed audiences across the world with its pristine and creative singing presentations. Burton says he is delighted to be asked to take on this role, and looks forward to new creations for the group. Earlier in the year, to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the Windrush generation in the United Kingdom, Ken was commissioned to write two new pieces of music. One of the pieces, entitled, We Honour You, is a tribute to those who left the shores of the Caribbean to come to Britain seeking new opportunities. The song is part of a current exhibition at the National Memorial Arboretum in the Midlands. These works were commissioned by one of Europe's premier a cappella groups, Black Voices, who also curated a Wind Rush Carnival Day at the National Memorial Arboretum in the summer of 2023. Celebration of Caribbean culture is at the heart of an exhibition at London's National Portrait Gallery. Running until February 2024. The exhibition highlights figures who were resident in the area of Croydon in South London. The event is the work of artist Kiam, and poetry by Croydon poet laureate Shanika Benjamin, who is Ken's niece. In the world of film, this has been an exceptionally busy year for Ken. He talks about some of them, starting with the current chart-topping Amazon film Candy Cane Lane. 
I've been very busy in the film world over the past few years doing a lot of work on soundtracks as either a singer or a conductor and my favorite gospel song of all time is a song called Total Praise. So when I get a call saying, can you please come and put a choir together to sing Total Praise on a new Eddie Murphy movie on the soundtrack, it's not something that you very easily say no to. That was a session that I will remember forever what happened in that room in Abbey Road Studios was just something otherworldly. To be produced by one of my childhood bass player heroes, Marcus Miller, that was incredible. And if you watch the movie, which is on Amazon Prime, in the 19th minute, there is a voice which says, on the 12th day of Christmas, my true love said to me. Uh, that's my voice on there and the total praise as well. And you can also hear the, the entire song of total praise on the soundtrack, which is available on all platforms. So that was a, that was an experience for life to work on that with Marcus Miller. And the film has been at number one in the Amazon film charts for couple of weeks now it's number one in many many countries on the Amazon charts and Amazon Prime charts and I've been reading that it's I think one of the best uh, and most successful Amazon films to date so it's wonderful to have been a part of that but even greater to be doing <laughs> something that is one of my favorite songs well um, that was just I was buzzing for days following that I was buzzing for days so thank you to all the Amazon music team in addition I've been doing work for for the Marvels. I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> We've also been adding our voices to some other films for the season. What else? Holiday Road, uh, Wonka, and other things I cannot even remember because when you get over 16, your memory starts to go. Well, Mr. Burton, seeing as you are 16, I must conclude it is way past your bedtime. And so on that note, I must say good night. Thank you so much for watching and a very prosperous new year to you all.